Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by former trainer of the year, Joe Gallagher. Just got back from Riga. How are you, Joe? Yeah, good, mate. Thank you. A uh, little bit tired, um, but yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, an experience the week over in Riga. Um, lovely city, beautiful people, um, and it was great to to fight. Um, in a live audience as well, and, and not to be wearing a mask all week. It was, uh, yeah. it was like a step back in time. Yeah, man. Well, I haven't been back to England since February. So it's kind of, I, I, it's, I'm struggling to imagine. I, I don't know what that, that's like. Luckily, I've been stuck here. Um, so, yeah, uh, we had Hosea Burton, your guy, fighting Richard Bolotniks in the semi-final of the MTK Golden Contract. What a fight, by the way. Absolutely amazing fight. Um, initial thoughts on what happened. Your, your guy lost by unanim unanimous decision. Um, tell, me, tell, me, tell me what you're thinking, Joe. Um, There's just a couple of things on the night. I thought it was a very close fight. Um, the scorecards were um, hugely embarrassing. I think yeah. one judge gave Blot next seven rounds, 10-9. One round 10 7 and two rounds 10 10. So, on that judge's scorecard, Jose yeah. Burton never won one round. Yeah, everyone that I've spoke to all said they had Ophi like 4 1 up after five or similars like that. So, it's like what one that was at two, there's no mandatory standing eight counts unless the ropes. Well, the first standing eight count, the ropes never saved Ophi. Ophi's on the put ropes, uh, was stood off the ropes, punching away and was involved in a clinch. And when the yeah. ref said break, he gave him a count. And I thought, well, that's not a standing eight count. Um, so that was on. And then the second eight standing eight count, the ropes never held him up neither then. So um, straight away, there's two counts there that they administered that they shouldn't have administered. The, the standing eight count is when they get caught with a shot. They're on the way down, but the ropes have stopped them going down. Neither of them uh, uh, applied to, to that situation. So, um, yeah, and, and then for Jose Burton, he dressed himself down and came back in the 10th. And I thought it was a, I thought it was a close fight. I thought scorecards of 96, 94, 96, 95, them type of scorecards is what they'll be. But um, obviously they weren't. And uh, the promoters got the promoter, uh, got the show in Latvia for, for a reason. And uh, listen, Richard, uh, Ricardo, uh, Ricard's bought the lot next. He, he done well. He kept a tape game, and, and his soccer, his opportunities when his game came, he, it wasn't like it was a, a whitewash. He, he had moments in the fight. Yeah. Um, he landed some good shots, but he missed with an awful lot of shots as well. Um, I thought Jose Burton's jab was very key in the fight. Um, landed some good right hooks to the head, good body shots. I like to say it was a close fight. It, it wasn't one that I, I, I want a rematch. I'd love a rematch. Ooh. I asked Lee in an MTK to uh, put a, a, an appeal in um, and straight away for a rematch on the grounds of uh, the judging being terrible. Okay. They the, the, the weren't up to championship standard and also to complain about the, their own rules and, and uh, for the referee who administered two standing um, standing 10-8 eight, uh, eight counts when yeah. it wasn't the, the reason for it. So... Uh, before there's any final, I'd like to see the rematch of that fight with uh, Jose Burton and Ricard Bollock next. And uh, I just wondered now, going on to the final, what would the final be in Latvia for Bollock next? Because I think the I, I, idea of it, that no one really has any home advantage and that light heavyweight tournament, if it was to have gone on in Latvia, then they should have put the other semi-final on it and they should have done the draw over in Latvia on Tuesday if they were moving it, not do the draw before and put one there and one here because that's those are the grains the grain of the format of the tournament so um listen we all can sit here and be bitter and annoyed and everything else but jose burton have been involved with him for 20 21 years now he's always in the gym he's a gym rat and um, needed a break he'd only lost like 10 seconds in his career after being ahead against frank buglione and um yeah, we just feel he, he, he just just didn't get his, his rewards in that fight. The other night, you seen on the night when we turned up, wasn't a proper canvas. They were putting gym floor mats and the canvas wasn't a canvas. It was some type of 
synthetic type of material um, that you yeah, use it from a, a, a shopping yeah. bag um, that you use from one of these uh, life shopping bags. It was like that. And yeah. uh, you've seen on the night they had to fix and pull it tighter to stop the, 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 the canvas sliding all across the ring. So, listen, that sat on the fight. Yeah. But like you say, the, um, the, the, the city itself was great. The people were great. The promoters were, were great. Um, but I just thought the, 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 the officiating for the contest was really poor. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Joe. I'm on board with everything you said. Uh, I was commentating and I did actually say I'm okay with the standing eight counts when I, when I initially saw it. It was all a bit crazy and quick and you saw where I was sat commentating. I was pretty much sat just with loads of Latvians around me. So it was, yeah. uh, which I enjoyed, to be honest. It was, it was yeah. a great atmosphere. Um, no, it was great. It was great. It's great of them to have an atmosphere again, obviously being in Eddie Hearn's garden and listening to Sky Drones, obviously to be there. And it was great for Tyson Fury and his dad to come over and Sugar Hill to support Jose Burton and get him in the ring. But there was just a sense of normality about the event. It was like, this is a proper boxing mm -hmm. show. So where people used to say, oh, was it weird fighting without the crowd? It seemed to be a little bit weird back fighting with the crowd. Yeah. And as you say, having that uh, atmosphere and it, it was good. It was great to see and uh, I think it'll be part of a sense of, of normality. But, uh, but for the judges to be I'm sure they're not being that heavily influenced, especially one of them, not to give Alfie Burton not one oh, no. round. It's, uh, they, 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 need, they, need to, they need a serious inquiry there. Yeah, and I believe there is, by the way. So, oh, is there? Um, yeah, so, um, which there should be. We, um, it is, uh, yeah, it's um, a, a growing thing, obviously, in, in such a small country. Um, but yeah, agreed with everything you said. Um, Great weekend for Latvia, obviously, with Bradis winning uh, as well, the World Boxing Super Series, so they're on a high and wanting to promote boxing, invite boxing and bring people over there is great, but scorecards like that ain't got to invite people over there. And it wasn't just that fight, I heard there was a couple of fights in the show, I heard there was a kid uh, that definitely won and the score did a draw. So I'm Yeah, not he won fight, every but... round, uh, Felipe Nasue. Uh, he was fighting a guy called Artur Gorlovs. Yeah, he won every round, literally. And so, he got a draw. Yeah, he got given a, a majority draw. Uh, one guy yeah. gave it to Gorlov. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah, there was so there was some bad scoring um, on the show. Um, I thought, I, I spoke to Anthony Crawler uh, outside um, afterwards. He said, he said exactly the same as you. Um, he said, I thought Bolotnik sort of, sort of nicked it. Um, and, uh, yeah, the scorecards were far too wide. I gave, uh, Hosea Burton the first four rounds, in fact. Well, uh, I, had, I said, I think after round five, I said to Ophi, like, you're 4-1 up here. I said to him, after eight, um, because you're away, I'd have it at worst level, but I'd have you most probably 6-2 up, something like that, or 5-3 or at worst. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, obviously, there was the round nine, for what's pulled it right even, and uh, you have to go out and win the tenth. And I thought he won the tenth, but listen, if Ophi had won earlier on, we won't be sat here crying about it. But um, yeah. it was just, it was just the the, the, the ten eights and, and the scoring. It was just, um, and when people complain about scorecards, and I know I've had it with John Ryder and Callum Smith, and yet no one wants to talk about the, the scorecard there. That's it's ridiculous. No, I think we do need to to keep keep talking about it because uh you need to there's, there's bad scoring in a lot of places that that was a that was a, a very uh, good example of some of the, the worst scoring you could get like you didn't give Jose Burton a round he he I had him yeah. taking the first four rounds five yeah. was very close six was very close seven I gave to Bolotniks I gave yeah, I came actually up. gave five and six to him as well but yeah. they could have gone either way ten was very close I thought um yeah. so yeah it was, uh, he definitely, he definitely did well. How, uh, in the corner, he comes, he comes back into the corner at the end of the ninth after an absolute beating and, and the, the, the interesting refereeing there. Um, what are you saying to Hosea in the corner uh, at the end of that ninth round? Um, listen, it was just a case of uh, getting his composure, uh, resetting him and just saying, listen, 
take no heed of all the shouting that's going around. He's throwing a lot. He's missing a lot. The referees give two standing counts. You're not hurt. Just recompose. Go out there. And um, he spent an awful lot of energy there, throwing, missing a lot. Because he missed an awful lot as well as he landed a few. Yeah. I said, so just reset his bone about and take it to him. You, you, you need to win this last round. And uh, he was fully um, coherent. He, he knew where he was and he was on it. And he came out and he did that. He landed good shots to the body. He landed a good right hand. And uh, yeah, he, he went out and quit himself when I think everybody thought Bolotniks was coming out to finish off the job. And uh, he couldn't do it. He hardly threw anything in the last round. Bolotniks, he, he was totally gassed himself trying to finish Jose in round nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. Um, how is he now? After as we've had a he couple of this, days, he, 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 he was usually distraught afterwards. He, oh. he broke down. He was upset, um, really upset. Um, there's always the same. Some parents. Um, I remember the, the Smiths' mum saying to uh, Callum, "Is it all the worth? Is, is all the lows worth that one high?" And uh, he said, yeah, it is, although he hasn't had many. But I think it was general to all the brothers. And like Jose said, yeah, I've had 25 highs, 25 wins. I won the British title. I fought at Gunnison Park. I fought in packed house in Manchester Evening News Arena. But it's them two lows now is all that kills him. It took him a while to get over Buglione. And yeah. hopefully he's got good talent. He's been avoided. Not many people would take a gamble. Um, and he was just gutted. I've just said he's just got to go home now and um, spend time with his family. And I said, for someone who was part of the Who Needs Him club, I won't be surprised now um, if offers come in for people wanting to fight you and take that chance now. And we've already had a, uh, somebody contact who would uh, also be interested in a fight. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's gutted. He's 31, 32 now. Um, he knew if he would have won that tournament, um, he would have given him a line and shot for a world title with a record of 27 and 1. Um, he's just got to go away and think about what he wants to do and because there, there may be fights out there but you, you can't at his stage of career come round and start doing six and eight rounders again he's got to go in with championship fights do you know what I mean and uh, try and get them opportunities or eliminate it and take a risk as an away fighter yeah so so definitely this isn't the last we've seen from uh, Jose Burton which is well at, at the moment we're not but we, 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 once he comes back after a couple of weeks he he, he may, may decide uh, not to continue. So we'll, we'll just have to see. Okay. The choice is up to his. Okay, mate. Um, so now you've you've dealt with your trip in Riga. What's next for, for Joe Gallagher, the Gallagher gym? Um, um, yeah, well, um, coming up? we've got Paul Butler out next. He's out on an MTK show October oh, the 18th yeah. in Wakefield. Um, it's a marking fight for Paul, tick over. Uh, he's number three in the IBF at the moment. We'll see what happens with uh, a new ace fight. Um, in a couple of weeks and um, see what he does with them belts. But Paul, he fought four times last year. He's on a good run of form. Um, and like you say, it's he's out in and just to keep them ratings activated and stay relevant. Um, and then after that, then we're hopefully getting Natasha Jonas out again before the end of the year. Yeah. Waiting on seeing on a Callum Smith, whether he gets his Canelo fight, it's still that's still up there in the air. Um, Callum Johnson were waiting for a fight for him he's due to fight for the European title um, but yeah we're, we're just waiting like you say there's loads of shows there's only a few shows but hopefully them three kids uh, and Natasha managed to uh, get a fight and uh, get some work especially yeah. Callum Smith yeah well we want to see Callum out one of the one of the best one of the best in the world at the moment um well, like you say, it's, it's very hard. The kids I mentioned there, Natasha, uh, Paul Butler, Callum Smith, Callum Johnson, Liam Smith, they're all the number one in the weight division in this country, in the UK. Um, and I'd say they're all well-ranked in the world. And uh, all four of them need to have a fight. And uh, even if they're only domestic fights, um, they, they need to be fought, whether you're seeing Anthony Yardy have a tick over Dex Spielman, Josh Boas yep. is having one. I think Callum Johnson needs a fight. Um, like you say, they are the number one in the country. Um, Liam Smith definitely needs a fight. A good fight would be Cheeseman with him when they're on about World Honours. That would be a good fight uh, if we can't get people from America or Mexico. Um, yeah, so like you say, Paul Butler's got a date now and Callum's hanging on, on for the Canelo. But uh, 
surely we've got to get uh, Callum Johnson and, and Liam Smith out. That they're, they're the number one in the country, and uh, yeah. they should be given a, a fight or a date or, or a slot somewhere between now and Christmas. So, so obviously Callum's uh, profile in America um, flew flew up after his um, fight with Better Beer. Um, is, and is Monaghan that not as well after Monaghan Monaghan was a very yeah, good win another great uh, win Monaghan, yeah. came, Monaghan came out afterwards and said and he's been in the gym with big names at fighting and sparring he said it, Callum Johnson was the hardest person who's ever hit he's been hit by so I think them type of statements have gone against him he has agreed to a Joe Smith fight he did agree for a Bivol fight and he did agree for a European fight no three of them have materialised and Eddie offered Callum Johnson the uh, European title fight, but a 40, 45% pay cut, and Callum Johnson wasn't going to do that. Um, Natasha Jonas at the moment now, she's trying to get a fight, but the thing is, is to keep saying, oh, the landscape's changed. So we, we all had a meeting in the gym, and a, a few of them raised good points. Um, Skies are still showing football. Sky is still showing Formula One, but Lewis Hamilton and the Premiership footballers aren't being asked to take pay cuts. Sky yep. are still showing boxing, but boxers are being asked to take a pay cut. Something's wrong somewhere or another. There doesn't seem to be a proper clear transparency. You're asking fighters to take pay cuts, but footballers and Formula One drivers and tennis players at the moment, now the French Open, I don't think they've been asked. No one's been asked to take the pay cut, only boxers. Yet they're all on these TV platforms that the same that the boxers are on. So. Uh, Asking fighters to take 40, 45% pay cuts and asking Tasha to take, like I said to Tasha, we, we took less money because it was an opportunity for a world title. But we proved we are on that stage now. And you're not fighting for, so bad words, but you're not fighting for slave wages no more. You have a worth. You, 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 yeah. you have something. Everyone knows. Everyone will tune in and watch that. You are marketable. You do have a profile. Everyone all around the country and in boxing thought you won that world title fight. Yep. You can try and hide it away with Terry Harper's mandatory, but Natasha Jonas is relevant in female boxing and she should be out again Christmas. She should be on this female card that they're trying to do at the moment and she should be paid accordingly. Like I said, they keep saying boxers have to take less money, but we're not hearing that from any other sports people who are being televised by the same TV company yeah, and they're all operating without crowds as well. Yes, yes. Um, Does that make sense, Adam? Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense, Joe. So we, sense. Um, and, we all, that, and that's what was talked about in the gym when we had, when we had the conversation about it all. Okay, interesting. Tony, uh, about Natasha Jonas, obviously you were in uh, a position when she lost in, in Cardiff um, uh, to uh, Obanow. Um, and obviously you've got kind of got uh, Josea Burton in a similar-ish sort of situation to when Jonas lost. Um, you've done a great job at rebuilding her. Um, it'd be great to get an insight into how how you've done that, how you've sort of dragged her from the ground and, and, and got her back to, to world title capability. Because it was a big loss. Oh, it was a huge loss. It was, I had a chat with Crawler at the airport on the way back and... It's great as a coach when you have your wins, but the losses that do take your toll on the on your and people say sometimes I'm too emotionally involved, but when that drive back from Wales to Manchester Liverpool with Natasha that night, I was awful. Stephen Smith losing a Monte Carlo, horrible changing room afterwards. Paul Smith, when he lost to Abraham, changing room. Uh, it's just it's a quick Frampton crawler when he lost a couple of times. It's hard. It's really hard for Ophir, Frank Buglione. You were so close to winning, it's pulled out. They're really hard and you can't help feel sorry for the kids. And it does take your tone here. But for Tasha, no one came in the change rooms after she got beat. No one from the board, no one from Sky, no one from match room. And she was just tossed to the side. Mm. And that was a hard journey back. And it took her a while to get over it, uh, mentally as well as physically. And it was just a case of bringing her back once she decided to, she wanted to carry on. Um, then, obviously, MTK brought her back on a, a few shows. And they did a great job matchmaking her, getting her back, getting her confidence going. 
and then obviously getting her in a position to get in a, a world title fight. And when she got the opportunity for a world title fight, um, it was penciled in. Lockdown happened, but that was a blessing because that gave us time to have a proper camp, study Terry Harper. No one helped at a fight date, so Tasha had all of me, and me and her, we were both had a point to prove that them people that didn't think it was fit to walk into them change rooms to see how she was. I know you remember Tasha's a mum at the time, I think she was 34, she's 36 now. I thought it was disgusting. And we wanted to make sure that we won that fight and we had the belts and be interesting to see who came, wanted to come into the changing room then. And it was just a case of that mindset to go and prove everybody wrong. We knew Steffi Bull and Terry Harper took that fight because they thought it was a give me. The way that they conducted themselves on social media saying Tasha was too old, too slow. And it was a, a right walk in the park. People thought I had lost the plot. The pressure had got to me that Tasha was going to get a hiding when it wasn't at all. I said all along, um, they made a big mistake, huge mistake. I said would hurt Terry. I said she didn't have a good engine. I said we'd try and would knock her out down the straight. And we nearly did. We had her out of it in round eight, didn't finish it. Terry was hanging on for dear life in them late rounds. And everyone, everyone in boxing, all thought Natasha Jonas won that night. So we proved it. And uh, it was just that mindset to show everyone. And we have brilliant sparring. Chantel Cameron, she's fighting for world title this weekend. A great sparring with her. Great sparring with Christine Bravington. Um, other girls as well. And we just had it. And I knew they'd struggle to find quality southpaw sparring to the pedigree of Tasha. But mm. I knew... There was plenty of style people out there that could replicate Terry Harper's style. And I think it's all in the preparation in a fight. And that was evidently so come fight night. Yeah. So um, on to uh, uh, Liam Smith. Obviously, there was talk about him fighting Kell Brook. It looks like he's going to fight Crawford, uh, things like that. In a perfect world, who would you like to see Liam go up against next? Who, who, who do you... Who, who would be the best person? I just want big fights for Liam. Obviously, he was, um, we were waiting on him. This Texel, uh, I can't pronounce his name, the WBO world champion, Texel, yes. having his, his defence, yeah, his mandatory. Um, that should have happened by now. And then, obviously, Liam would have become the number one then and would have got his shot then after that once he waited. Um, I've also said to Liam, listen, put your name in the middleweight mix. See whether, what about a fight with uh, Eubank Jr.? That'd be a good domestic fight. Um, Liam Smith versus Chris Eubank Jr. at the moment. Um, um, yeah, I just want big fights for Liam. Liam's a very uh, underrated fighter. He's uh, got a great skill set. Everyone's always impressed with him when they've been to the gym and watched him spar. Um, he's, he's training at the moment. He's doing some sparring with uh, Metcalf at the moment, who's got a big fight coming up. So, um Liam's always ready for sparring and I just want him and like you say it was a shame now the Brook fight never happened I think that was just a um, uh, a PR exercise to try and draw some interest and keep Cal Brook relevant um, now it's a case of Liam Smith uh, getting a shot or an opportunity whether it be at light middleweight or middleweight um, whatever it was I'd love Liam to be involved in a big fight or a, a huge domestic showdown fight as well so uh he deserved it. He's paid his dues and he's an exciting fighter. Liam isn't someone like Kel who's looking for a last payday for retirement. Liam has ambitions on becoming a, a two-time world champion or a two-weight world champion and um, carrying on. So um, he's a hungry kid. He had a, a three good fights last year. He beat Sam Higginson, then he fought in Mexico and then he, he fought in Arizona at the end of the year. Um, it's a shame he's not got out yet, but he's definitely one that needs to... Uh, get a date very soon and be out before the end of the year yeah okay good to hear good to hear um so it sounds like all the guys are kind of just ticking over waiting for the call at the moment that's yeah definitely the gym was busy today obviously uh, paul butler was in tasha was in calm smith was in um yeah marcus morrison was in yeah the, the gym's in people are in calm johnson's training away down south liam smith was spied in today so yeah, the, the, the fighters are in the gym. I've always tried to install that, that you've got to be in the gym. You can't be sitting, be uh, waiting for a date no more. In this environment, you've got to get in there. If there's an opportunity and you've got four, six weeks, to be honest, you'll grab it with both hands because there isn't that many dates about. Yeah, my pleasure. Brilliant. Um, 
I think I've, I probably haven't covered everything because you've got you deal with so many, so many, so many people. Um, but yeah, that's that's great. It's great to get um, your your honest opinion on the uh, on everything that's going on. It's been it was a real pleasure working with you all week in Riga. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm no, it's great to catch up. Yeah, thanks yeah, for giving us uh, the, the the spots to go for places to eat and uh, that. No, it was great, and it, we, had a, we had a great time. The the, the people were really nice and. Uh, what what a love what a lovely city what a lovely city. It's a city. great city, man. It's a great city. We yeah. plan to do some big things with it. So um, yeah, yeah. bear with us on that. But uh, yeah, Joe, thank you so much for speaking to Pro Boxing. No problem, Adam. No problem, and uh, keep in touch. And hopefully, we may see you again in a rematch. Hopefully, hopefully, man. Yes, and all right then. Cheers, Adam. Take care.